the movie begins with the anorexic emo getting arranged marriage set by their parents. So the emo's parents are wealthy fish merchants that see marriage as nothing but a partnership. To climb up the social ladder by marrying into a noble family to boost their own social status. The correct term for these nobles is an aristocrat. Or as I'd like to call them, the privileged spoiled brats. So it's their happiest day ever while this weirdo eavesdrops about the marriage. Let's go dear. Oh, but you're obese. Your ass is the size of seven starving kids. How dare you, I am thick. Oh. Meanwhile, this noble family only has status and financially so broke they don't have a dollar to their name. So to them, the marriage will save them financially, but it's their worst day ever because of how embarrassing it is to marry a lower class fish merchant. But it's a win-win. The fish merchants gain higher status and the nobles can be wealthy again. But these parents describe their own daughter, the bride, as an otter. With a face of an otter in disgrace. Boy, how are you going to call her an otter when you shape like Humpty Dumpty while your face looks like the moon emoji? Then we're introduced to the bride, Victoria. What if I don't like that emo? So what? You think your father and I like each other? Surely you must. Of course not. We haven't slept together since you were born. Then we're told the anorexic emo's name is Victor. To get a woman to like you, you must fart on her face. I don't think that's how it works. Nonsense, I let your father do it multiple times. What if I just talk to her? She'll get the ick immediately. Then the parents of the bride and groom meet. So when she's not looking, you rip out a fat one like this. Hmm? Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Peasants. Hmm. Yo, how is a servant more stuck up than a wealthy fish merchant? Like, sir, you are a slave. Big Mama over here can literally buy you and your whole family. Oh dear, it's not as big as our place. Spoiled brats, meet the peasants. Why, your chin looks like a giant peanut. Ah, wait a minute. He's goddamn right. Smile. I don't have a neck. Then the parents go into a separate room and Victor brags he can play piano and Victoria hears it. You play beautifully. You don't have to be nice, I know I'm terrible. And you don't have to be a pick-me boy. Would you like to hear me fart? I do. <laughs> that was lovely, actually. You like farting on a woman? <laughs> no. I, uh... Cling. Oh, dear. And straight away, they find chemistry with each other. How disgustingly inappropriate. How dare you two meet before a wedding when you've never met before. So shameful. Yes, how dare they talk to each other a day before their own wedding. The scandal. And later, they rehearse their wedding vows. I hereby make you my wife. Hurry up, I need to pee. And we meet Lord Barkus. The same dude creeping and eavesdropping the fish merchants. I'm unemployed and lonely. Ah, ow. I need to pee. Do you not wish to be married, you little shit? No. You do not? No, I meant I would very much. Ow. I need to pee. Then the shy emo drops the ring and creates a fire. I hope this helps you burn faster. Stop fanning it. Ooh. Ooh. Hm. Well, guess what? I piss myself. Because of you, it's your fault. So the nobles hate him as Victor is told to memorize his lines. Oh, she definitely got the ick. So then Victor goes to the woods and practices his vows only to wake up a dead corpse who accepts it. So dude attracts dead people. Weird flex, but okay. I do. Hello, husband. Uh, uh, uh. Huh? That avatar looking ass. She's a... Uh. Then bro loses his first kiss to a corpse and is transported to the land of the dead. What? Yeah, not a good day for you, is it? Hey, husband, let's have some fun. After all, I'm your wife. What the fuck? Wake up! Does the emo have the gut? Mwah, f*** me. Mmm, uh. maggots. <laughs> So the corpse's name is Emily, and her story is she fell in love with a man who used her for money and took all her gold and murdered her on their wedding day. Then Emily makes a vow to wait for her true love to set her free and believes it's Victor because he said the wedding vows that he'll be by her side forever. Except he run for the milk. So the family's all like, where's Victor? Then Mr. Ballsack's on my chin, says Victor left the town with another mistress, implying he has another lover. That's outrageous. I knew that emo boy had hose. So the nobles give the fish family till dawn to find them or they're gonna call off the wedding. Meanwhile, finding milk is a lot difficult in the land of the dead. Aha! Huh! Mmm, come here, my little emo. And instead of clarifying the situation that he was practicing his wedding vows, Victor does not correct her. So he's like, you wanna see my mom, G? And she's all like, oh yeah, bro, I wanna see your mom, cuz. So he tricks her to get her help back to the real world when I'm sure she could've still helped if he was honest. So Victor makes Emily all excited thinking she's gonna meet his parents, but she's not. La 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 Ah, shit. So Emily, I'll go get my parents. Just wait here. Okay. I like breast milk. <laughs> Fight. I ain't coming back. If I see that emo boy ever again, I will mutilate his nuts. And I'll inject him with AIDS. And while Emily is waiting, her little maggot friend tells her to question Victor. Oh, he's out there cheating on you, G. Nah, uh he's a loyal man. Last time you thought that, you got murdered, G. So what should I do? Just follow him and be toxic? Then Victor sneaks into Victoria's room, little freaky ass. Your dad hates me. Well, he hates me too. Sit down, Victor. Do you need breast milk? Oh, I was so worried you got the ick today. But I'm glad I rizzed you up. Now let us make out. Ah. <sighs> I would like that very much. Mmm. Ah, what the fuck? Don't look. Don't look what? I think I stepped on dog shit. <gasps> Darling, who's this? Who is she? I'm his wife. I'm a side chick? 
No, she's dead. Look, you cheater. Ah, no, I was about to make love. No. A few moments later. You lied to me just to cheat with that other woman. But you're the other woman. No, you're married to me and you drank her breast milk. <laughs> then Victor is finally honest and explains why it won't work. I mean, you're dead. You're just discriminating against dead people. It was a mistake. I would never marry you. Huh? Ugh. Dude, how are you gonna act shocked after you tell her it's a mistake and I'll never marry you? So Emily's sad and a spider tries to comfort her but only makes it worse. You don't have looks but personality. Which is another way of saying personality is all you have. So Emily cries because she just wants to be loved. And this confuses me because just from her appearance she looks like she can pull anybody. Even for their celebrity lookalike, I'd say Emily arguably looks the best. So I don't know why a spider pulling up talking about you might not have looks but you have personality when she's got both. Meanwhile Victoria crashes out. He's married to a dead woman. Are you high? We have to help him. You're crazy. Goodbye. And Victoria's a green flag because in the pouring rain, she sneaks out and walks miles to find help for Victor. I mean, she's literally known him for less than a day and she's traveling miles for him. That's a keeper. So Victoria meets the priest. Wake up, you old fart. The hell are you doing here? A dead woman dragged Victor to hell. And does it look like I care about it? There must be something we can do. I know what we can do. And he snitches to her mama. What is this? She is a possessed woman and cray cray. No, I'm... Ah. Uh... Thank you, old fart. Take her to our room. Wow, you're getting grounded at your grown age? Can't relate. I got hit. Then Bo Zonchen comes up going, Oh, if I could marry your daughter, I'll give her riches beyond royalty. Hmm. Great news you're getting married to. Lord Barkis. Lord Barkis. Way better than that fish peasant. But I do not love him. To be fair, Victoria, you don't know Victor enough to love him either. I mean, you just met the guy today. Please, he has balls on his chin. This conversation's over. You will marry him and have his babies. No. Ha! The Mr. Bulls on chin continues to be a creep and eavesdrops. <laughs> Yo, how is this dude allowed to roam free in another person's house? And he plots to kill Victoria and steal her wealth. Meanwhile, Victor's parents look for him. That bastard, I'll kill him! <coughs> and the driver dies, and Victor's parents aren't seen in the film again. So I'm going to assume they're okay. And as Emily continues to be sad, Victor tries to make her feel better and they start getting along. I enjoy our time together. Likewise. I'm telling you at this point, not only did it look like they got chemistry, but Victor was really enjoying his time with Emily. Then a newcomer arrives to the land of the dead. Isn't that my slave? <gasps> so the driver that died arrives to the land of the dead and tells Victor Victoria is getting married to another man. What? But I thought she liked me. Now Victor really turns emo. And Victoria cries and gets married to a man with balls on his chinny chin chin. Oh, she not happy. And this dude completely gives up on Victoria. But I still have Emily. So the man goes to a second option but overhears their conversation. So marriage lasts till death do us part. What are you saying? You're already dead, so he's single. <gasps> if he finds out, he'll leave. Unless we give him poison. Oh, we gotta kill him, G. What? Damn. We gotta hurry. Oh, hell no. No, that's evil. I could never. Well, I am an emo. Let's do it. So basically, dude straight up gives up on life after finding out his first option got taken. What are you, a teenager? And he says the wedding will take place in the land of the living, inviting everyone that's dead. So, the dead pulls up to the land of the living. Oh, oh we. Uh, uh, save me, daddy. You know, he acts pretty scared for someone with massive balls. This is asinine. My grandfather would never allow this. Hello? Son, you got baked beans? Ah. And everyone panics at first till it becomes a wholesome meet and greet for family members and lost loved ones. Except this one. I know dude moved on and has a new wife. And we deserve the scene where the dead wife meets a new wife and beats the shit out of him. Alright. Give me all your money. What money? Your family trust fund. My parents don't have any money. My mama so broke she'll go to the poor house. The poor house? You're lying! Get off me. I'll knock your ass out, you stupid bitch. <gasps> so long, testes. Then Victoria notices the dead heading to a church, so she follows. Get back, you foul creatures. Don't you know you belong in hell? Back! Ain't nobody here for you. I think I saw your wife in hell. So the wedding begins, and Victor looks pretty happy to me. Dare I say, infatuated by Emily. And Victoria enters while Victor starts his vows. I know drinking this will kill me. Hee <gasps> hee. Now I shall drink this poison. Uh, no. I told you he was too ugly. You can't die. Why not? Because you're not mine. So Emily, who just wanted to be loved, the moment she sees Victoria, she sees herself in her. Someone who wished to be loved as well. And since she knows what that's like, she says, My dreams were taken from me. Now I've stolen it from someone else. And invites Victoria to take her place. You see how Victoria didn't interrupt the wedding and gave Emily her moment, even if it meant losing Victor? Very mindful. Very demure. How cute. My testes would allow it, but... She's still my wife. You. Emily. You. I left you. For dead. <gasps> Shing. Give me your gold or I kill her. If you're broke, just say that. You want to die, emo. Mm. Catch. Ching, ching, ka-ching. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <gasps> no. <Rah. gasps> 
<sighs> so Emily's a girl's girl and a walking green flag. Get out. Then this dumbass drinks the wine not knowing it's poison. You're always the bridesmaid, never the bride. How does it feel to always be second choice? And she's like, just put the fries in the bag, little bro, and drink the wine. Glug, 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 glug. And he dies. <gasps> so that's where the term blue balls came from. Then they gang up and beat his smurf looking ass up. Please, not my balls. No. Oh, Victor, I'm so happy. Then Emily smiles and walks away. But Victor's all like, I made a promise. Which is great news to Emily that Victor's genuinely willing to marry her. But what about Victoria? What about her feelings? She reunites with who she thinks is the one for her just for him to go, yeah, anyways, let's get married, Emily. But Emily says he already did keep his promise and that she is finally free. So she gives him the ring, walks off and goes to heaven, bro? I don't know. They don't tell us. And when people debate online, it was at this moment Victor developed feelings for Emily, so comment your thoughts if he did or didn't, because I think he did end up liking her, but liked Victoria more. As this film gives off right person, wrong timing kind of theme, and that marrying the person you want to marry is a privilege that we should appreciate more. Thank you so much for watching, it's been your boy KC, and yeah, till next time.